Welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. Brothers and sisters, it's a new week and we're happy to bring you a new show. In fact, this week is chock full of information, so we have to select what we can present to you that makes sense. But before we start the show of today, we want to go back to kitchen item. The first kitchen item that we really have that is important, we want to inform you is free real estate seminar. We're organizing a free real estate seminar on March 21st, 2020. We're going to share the information with you. We're organizing this event at the White Oak uh, Recreation Center in Silver Spring, Maryland. The name of the street is April Lane. So you're going to get more information on this. You can watch it and you see that's why we're organizing the seminar. This seminar is intended to change the statistics of home ownership among our people. We were looking at some statistics a few days ago, and we're very disappointed when we look at the statistics of home ownership in the United States. Among black people and Africans, the percentage is 42%. Among whites, the percentage is 72%. So this is a wide range. The discrepancy is so wide. So we want to narrow this discrepancy. Why is it that 72% of whites own homes, whereas only 42% of Africans or blacks own homes in the United States? We want to change this dynamic. We want to change this statistic. We want to move the barometer from 42 to above even 75. To do that, we started by looking at the, the causes. Why is it that most of our people don't invest in real estate. I think the primary reason, being a realtor, and I will tell you sincerely, I've been a realtor since the year 2000, but I started investing in real estate back in 1997 when I bought my first uh, home in Silver Spring, Maryland. And in my book, The Miraculous Millionaire, I explain the process of real estate, and how I was able to buy my first home. So most people sometimes have a lot of issues which is why a lot of people in our community don't invest in real estate. They feel like, oh, maybe they need to be rich before they can start. No. I think the biggest problem is lack of knowledge. Most of our people don't invest in real estate is because they don't have the knowledge. Our people meet, but they don't talk about financial issues. They may talk about cultural stuff, but they don't talk about stuff that can help them move ahead the way people from other ethnic groups do. When most Jews meet during their meetings, they talk about ways to move ahead financially. When Africans meet, we talk about garbage. So this has to stop. We have to start talking about pocketbook issues because they are very, very important. If we have to liberate ourselves from the colonial monsters, when I say colonial monsters, you get angry that I'm calling them monsters. They are monsters because they are the monsters over your life. So if you don't want them to be our masters, you have to get rid of them. You have to liberate yourself. And one of the ways you can liberate yourself is to at least own your own home in the United States. The United States is a system that is different from Europe. Europe is an elitist society. The United States tends to be more egalitarian. In Europe, only members of the royal family can buy a home. In America, the philosophy is different. Every human being, every citizens should be able to buy a home for themselves. But this statistic is very low among our people because, one, they come to the United States as foreigners, so they don't really understand the intricacies of home buying. I remember when I used to live in Alexandria, Virginia. One guy used to make fun of his uh, Yoruba friends who were buying homes. I will not call his name because I don't want him to feel ashamed, but he knows who he is. When his friends buy homes, he will come to me and complain about them. Little did I know that there are so many benefits of home ownership. So he was telling me, oh, these guys are going to die. Look at my friend Bada. He's bought a home. He's going to die in America. He will not even finish paying this home off. I feel sorry for Bada. Eventually, I came to understand that the way home ownership works in America is different from Africa. When you buy a home, basically, you have to understand three things. Land, real estate, and real property. Real property is a concept which means when you have land in addition to 
changes that you've, you've made to that land or improvements. Land simply means the earth surface above and below. Then, of course, you have the key concept of real property. Real property means you own real estate plus a bundle of rights, the way it was understood during the old times, in the Middle Ages in Britain. You pick branches of a leaf. That represented the different aspects of land ownership, the bundle of rights. You have all those rights. In real estate class, we call them deep sea. Deep sea, that's the acronym for the term, bundle of rights. So owning a home in America has all these advantages, but most of our people do not buy homes because they don't really know how it works. So we decided to make it easy for people to know all of this. We are organizing this seminar in, in March, on the 21st of March, because we want to share a lot of information with everybody who is interested. We are marketing this information now on social media, Facebook, YouTube, and now on this show. So if you have your friends, tell them that they can attend this seminar. If they live far away from Maryland, they can call us, we'll send them information. And on that day, we'll have a direct lender. Academy Mortgage has already accepted that they will participate in this uh, seminar. Academy Mortgage is a direct lender. They have their own money. They know about all the secret programs that the government is giving money to poor people. And you qualify as part of the poor people. So the government can give you a whole lot of money to buy your first home. So we're spending a lot of time on this video because this is important news that we're giving you. We want you to benefit from this news. Don't say you did not hear it. The government is giving away more than 10 to 12,000 to first time home buyers. And this is not a loan. It's a gift. The only condition is you have to agree that you're going to live in the house as your primary residence. You're not going to rent the house to somebody else. You're going to stay there. So if you think you're going to stay in the home, then you can take the free money from the government. And you can get a whole lot of money, or at least 12000 just to buy your first home from the government. As a result, you don't have to come up with a whole lot of money for down payment. So we'll make it in such a way that you qualify easily. We're going to bring Robert Spies, who is a loan officer who manages one of the branches for Academy Mortgage. He's going to be at the seminar live. He will bring his computer, and he'll be able to take your application and pre-qualify you on the spot. So you'll be able to know whether you can buy a house or not. So he'll make things easy. He's not just going to come and make a speech. He's going to answer all your questions. In fact, the way we're going to organize this seminar, we're going to make it more like a workshop so you don't have to spend too much time reading or listening to us speak. No, we're going to speak briefly. Then we're going to give a whole lot of time for you to ask questions because we want to make sure that whatever is bothering you, you can ask the question and we'll resolve the question for you. So this is the information that we're sharing with you. It's very important. Don't forget, if you are on Facebook, you can check me out, Prince Ojong. I will be sharing this information every week until March 21st, because I want to make sure that many members of my community can get this information. So you don't really need a whole lot of money to buy a house. So I'm just debunking that theory. People may make you feel like you need a whole lot of cash. No, you don't. You need a job. So if you don't have a job, we can help you look for a job so that at least you can make some money and you have income. So once you have income and the government is ready to help you, you can buy a house easily. So the fact that you do not know should not be an excuse anymore. By doing this, we're going to make it possible for you to own a home. Then we'll move the statistics from 42% to above 75 for Africans who are living in America. Okay? So we're going to make it easy. So we're telling you we want to really help every African to buy a home. That's our project. And we're serious about this project. Even with a loan. We have loans for people who don't even have social security numbers. In the past, it was difficult to get a loan in America if you are not a US citizen or you don't have a green card or if you don't have a social security number. We've come up with programs that can help you. Even if you don't have a green card, no problem. Bad credit, no problem. For those who have bad credit, we can even help you clean your credit so you can qualify. That's another reason why most people don't buy homes because their credit is bad. So that should not be a good excuse anymore. We want to take that excuse away from you so that you should not complain that you're not buying because your credit is bad. So I think these are the two main reasons people don't really buy homes. And we're going to take you to our Facebook profile. Go there, 
type in Prince Ojong on Facebook. I will be putting information on this seminar every week until the 21st. So now we can go now to our news section. Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jong, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the states, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, fat refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing. The Prince. Now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. For the news of today, we really want to look at the U.S. security interests. In the past, the U.S. has been helping other countries. As much as we believe in self-help, but we think on a colossal level, the United States has been helping Europe. The United States has been helping Asia. When you see most of the Asian countries rising, oh, the Asian tigers, it's because they're getting a lot of assistance from the United States, the biggest superpower in the world. So Africa has done a lot to help the United States. And besides, it is in the security interest of the United States to help Africa politically, socially, and economically. So today, we're talking about U.S. interests in Africa. This week, Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State, is traveling to three African countries. This is very strategic. Why is he traveling to these African countries? Well, certainly, you should have to know this. There is a trade war going on right now. The U.S. was sleeping. The U.S. is a giant that has been sleeping. And China has been moving into the African space. And China has been giving money with its road belt initiative. So they've been giving money to African countries. And this has even been fueling corruption. Much of what I've been seeing in China is not really development. China takes money, gives to African countries' leaders. They build roads. They bring labor from China to build these roads. How is that helping Africa? So we want America to change the terms of trade. Trade that can really help African countries, okay? We want development. When China builds a bridge, when this bridge breaks down or collapses, you need to bring China to fix it. Is that development? No. That is modernization without development. That's what my professor used to call it. We want real development where the Africans learn the technology, how to build the bridges themselves. Then they can work with the United States to build all these structures, okay, and make them sound. So we don't want China to just come, give money to dictators, then build the roads. The dictators put the money in their pockets and corruption is everywhere, fueling negative stuff in the continent. So we want things to change. So now that the U.S. Secretary of State is going to uh, three African countries, he's going to Senegal. We've talked about Senegal a whole lot on this show. And you know why he's going to Senegal? Because even though Senegal is not really a perfect country, they have been able to pass the U.S. test of a thriving democracy. There have been changes in power from the time the post that Senegal came, okay? Abdul Diop took over. Then now you have Macky Sall. First you had uh, uh, Abdullah Wade. So you've had that transition to power that is really smooth. So this is remarkable, and I think Mr. Pompeo is going to Senegal also to draw attention to this problem. But besides, there's also the problem of uh, Islamic uh, terrorism. I think that's also a second reason why Mr. Pompeo is going to that region, because a lot of people in that area, they are close to the Sahel region, and a lot of Islamic militants have been wreaking havoc. France is a very weak country, as much as they make a lot of noise. France cannot fight any effective war without U.S. support. So the U.S. is really going there to show up support because when the U.S. made some comments that um, they may even pull out of Africa, France was already crying like a baby, okay, because they have baby Macron as their president. France was crying already because if America leaves, 
France cannot fight that fight. The French have never won a war. Look at Indochina. They lost. The Vietnamese beat them, the hell, the shit out of them. Okay? So I feel sorry for the French because they cannot fight without American aid. So what we're saying now is Africans have to be ready because the U.S. has to know that it is in the U.S. interest to support Africa politically, socially, and economically. And we think we've been sharing this idea on our show, and the U.S. government is getting to understand our point of view. Because if we don't support Africa politically, socially, and economically, then we're going to be bringing problems at home. The problem with Islamic terrorism would come right here and hit us in the United States. So it's better for us to help Africa the way we did even with a Marshall Plan in Europe. Okay? The Marshall Plan was used to develop Europe, and a similar plan was used to develop Asia. So now the United States needs to start thinking strategically how they can help African countries so that democracy can flourish. Instead of babysitting dictators, we need to flush them out and bring the younger generation to take power in Africa so that they can be democracy and peace. Okay? Those are the type of initiatives Mr. Pompeo needs to have. And we're sharing this with him. He will leave uh, Senegal, he'll go to Ethiopia, and later on he'll go to Angola. We spoke about Angola two weeks ago. We spoke about uh, Isabel dos Santos' corruption. That's a country that is rich in oil. But we want this oil to really benefit the people. And it is in the U.S. interest to make this happen. We need better trade. Asia now is developed. Europe is developed. So Africa is the last frontier where we need U.S. development money. Okay? The U.S. can develop programs that can really assist Africa to develop. And this development can be politically, can be socially, and it can be economically. So now the issue of terrorism is there. Why is there terrorism? We've talked about this a whole lot of times. It looks like most of the African leaders don't even ask that question. You have to know why is terrorism rampant. Terrorism is rampant because of political factors, economic factors, and social factors. When you don't allow your brother to speak, when somebody speaks, you kill him or you shoot him. You're forcing him not to speak. So when you're preventing peaceful revolution, then you are encouraging war. Okay? One thing I love about this store, they are very consistent and they treat the customers very, very well. You come here, you see everything that, is, that you will need for your house. That's the next thing that you're encouraging. War will come. But when the people have the right to speak their mind, then you're making the feel level and people are happy. When people are not happy, there is social discord. So to cure this problem of Islamic terrorism, we need to understand the root causes. The root causes are political, social, and economical. Okay? Economically, most of these people need to live better lives. Okay? Then their lives need to have meaning. But when you make people live like animals and their lives have no meaning, the resources of the country are consumed by a cabal. The average citizen is not betting from these resources. Then people will start fighting back because they want their share. This is what is really happening in a lot of places now in Africa. We even touch in South Sudan. Today, we overheard that uh, Silver Key, the president of South Sudan, was trying to make some concessions to his former vice president, Reef. Masha, why? He had created so many divisions in the country and he wants to return to the original division of just 10 units from, say, 38 or 42. But it looks like 
Reef Masha has rejected that offer. So when we look at it, the February 22 deadline of peace in South Sudan is far-fetched. And we think they're going to miss that deadline again. So many deadlines are going to be missed. And where is the peace? But when we look at South Sudan, we even had uh, one of our reporters who did a report on South Sudan and sent it to us last week. We wanted to know, why is it that there is fighting in South Sudan up to today? The world doesn't know this. The main media is not telling you. Oil is fueling conflict in that part of Africa. Those people don't just hate themselves, but the Western world is bringing in the politics of oil. They want the oil of this country. They want to distract the people so that they don't pay attention to the looting of the oil. Take these arms. So they take the arms and, and they continue fighting. So I'm telling you now, that this is what is really creating the problem in South Sudan because with all these arms are rampant, they, they bring them in, then the various factions are fighting with arms that came from outside. So this is not good. And this, the same is true even of Cameroon, Ambazonia. A few uh, <laughs> days ago, there was uh, a fake election and we reported on that. But today, we just got news about a massacre in part of the north uh, region, where over 27 people were killed in a family. But it looks like the world is not paying attention. <laughs> when the world doesn't pay attention, when people are killed like this, eventually these people want to revenge. Okay? You kill my father, you kill my mother. I may be angry today, but tomorrow I want to do something about it. I'm not Prince Hamlet. In Shakespeare's uh, play, Prince, uh, Prince Hamlet of Denmark, his father was killed, but Hamlet just keeps thinking, thinking, thinking. He cannot really do anything about it. Thought even paralyzes him, so he cannot act. Your average person is not like Prince Hamlet. When they want to revenge, they really go ahead and wreak revenge on their oppressor. And that's what is happening now in Cameroon. The foolish dictator who is there is thinking that he's very powerful. But the people are killing themselves. Eventually, they'll get to him. Because he may think he's untouchable, but eventually they'll get to him. And that's the sad part. Okay? Sometimes these dictators think they are immune, but people eventually get to him. So we are suggesting now that it is in the US interest to look at this problem, to look at why what is fueling all this conflict, then try to get to the root cause. That's how you solve a problem. Life insurance money secrets of millionaires and billionaires exposed. Discover how America's rich and famous exploit these arcane tools to build fabulous wealth. Why should these big white guys have all the fun? Let Prince Ojong, the celebrity author of The Miraculous Millionaire, show you the little understood life insurance way to riches. Are you still doubting the good things that life insurance can do for you? Trust strategies, estate planning, 401k rollover, annuity contract, cash value, education funding, executive benefits, income protection, life protection, living benefits, mortgage protection, Tax-free retirement? Think and grow rich with life insurance. Your amazing journey to wealth begins by calling Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. Somebody like Buhari, who go to Nigeria now, he doesn't even understand how to solve the conflict. This week, we saw uh, the Ibop, the indigenous uh, people of Biafra, they were celebrating Mazi Namdekanu's uh, parents' uh, death. He was not even there. They didn't allow him to come. But there was a, a big crowd everywhere. I must have pictures to show you. And when we see this, it just tells you that uh, the people of Biafra are not happy. And it looks like they're going to return to that old concept of Biafra from what we see. Already, they were talking about uh, Ogunigbe, which was one of these uh, IEDs that was created by Biafra engineers during the war. It looks like they are trying to rework on it as their own way to secure their area for peace. And they are talking to other minorities in, who are near their region so that they can join them. Last week, we spoke about uh, 
what the Yorubas were already doing for security, the Amotekun. Then we also spoke about uh, the Shege Kafasa from the Awusas. Now the Igbos are going back to their Ogunigwe. So Ogunigwe is, is their own approach to security. Then what are we thinking? Well, we're thinking that the whole place may just uh, break into pieces. Already uh, everybody is doing their own thing. And we don't really know what uh, the Buhari government is doing. The signs are everywhere. It looks like even when Buhari went to Mediguri to talk to, to consult with some of the families, the people were not really happy to see him. They were even jeering at, at him and he was really feeling bad. The members of his entourage were really uh, disappointed. Why should they not be disappointed? When you don't do your job, people are not happy, then they have to tell you that you're not doing your, your job. You're not doing a good job. So it's really sad when you look at the pictures of Nigeria and uh, a lot of uh, insecurity and the people are really unhappy and the U.S. has already placed a travel ban. All of that is going on. But this week, you can really see the problems that are going on now with the formation of uh, the Ogunigbe. So we think we've really come to the end of our show, but we're really emphasizing, look at even like Libya. Libya is where we want to end this show today. Because Libya, since the fall of Gaddafi in 2011, there has been no peace. Today, Libya is broken into pieces. You have Khalifa Haftar, and you have the other guy, Fayez al Sure. These two are fighting, and they have factions supporting them. There's been an embargo, and there's been a ceasefire, but the ceasefire is not holding because the two parties have international supporters who are fueling this conflict. On the one hand, you have France and Russia supporting uh, Khalifa. On the other hand, you have uh, uh, the people supporting uh, Fayez. So the conflict just keeps going on. Even the meeting that they held in Berlin, Germany, has no significance because nothing is really happening that is really helping to solve the problem. So instead, the government that was supposed to be a state of the masses, Arab Jamalhiria, under Gaddafi, has just become torn into pieces. So we really feel sad for the people of Libya. This is the cause. Is this what they get for killing Gaddafi? The French kill, helped them kill Gaddafi. Look at the mess it has created. And they are living with it every day. So I hope they are really thinking. Gaddafi was there, he was a dictator, but I think he was really helping his people to live well. So when they look at what is happening today, I think they will remember him every day. So we thank you very, very much for watching this show. And we've highlighted a lot of the points we want to highlight on the show of today. And we know you always like to watch us. So we're encouraging you to continue subscribing. And we're thanking our subscribers. Thank you very, very much for subscribing. By subscribing, you make the show reach a whole lot more people. And our revolution is really going on. And we're reaching a lot of people. And we're happy about it. So we thank you again, and we say, may God bless you. Bye-bye. Faber International Food Store. African food costs too much money. Yes, we agree. In fact, that is why we opened Faber International Food Store. One, price, low prices every day. Two, variety, get everything you are looking for. Three, customer service. Enjoy the best customer service. Or shipping station. We bring the food to you. Faber International Food Store. We are Africans Costco and Sam's Club. Retail wholesale, online, offline. Act now. Experience Faber's freebies today. Call 301-595-3500. Faber International Food Store. 11456 Cherry Hill Road. Beltsville, Maryland. 20705. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.